حسبی اللہ لا الہ الا ہوا علیہ توکرد و ہوا رب العرش العظیم اللہ از سفیشنٹ فور می دیر از نان وردی آف ورشپ بت ہیم آئی ہیو پلیس مائی ٹرسٹ ان ہیم ہی از لوڈ آف دا میجسٹک فروم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ایوری ون ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل آئی تھنک مائی کامیو از از اے وتھ ٹیلٹڈ اٹس ناٹ لائک اسٹریٹ بٹ ڈزنٹ میٹر You know, I've always loved being special and I've always loved following what I feel is right and not follow the crowd. I think nowadays most people, when I look around me, especially on social media, I see that most people, they are easily influenced by what's going on, what, what is the trend in the world, even if the trend is not a good thing. You know, nowadays we see people just, uh, especially when it comes to women, unfortunately, I have to say that it really breaks my heart to see that very often the problem is not even with the way men treat us, but the way we treat ourselves, the way we present ourselves in society, on social media. The level of nudity has become really extremely shocking to me. And what I find even more shocking is that it seems like for these people it is absolutely normal not only is it normal but it seems to be really encouraged and glamorous and something which they feel proud about which of course i find very inaccurate it is not by removing your clothes that you show your worth or your beauty to the world if you have that perception then i think that there is already something terribly wrong within you and you need to fix that so i personally i don't really use instagram i don't use instagram i find instagram extremely cringy extremely toxic and extremely It just doesn't have anything healthy to bring. It's just like seeing these pictures of people's perfect lives and believing that this is real and wasting your own precious time, etc. Also very negative influences, very bad examples when it comes to ways of dressing, ways of living, when it comes to Bollywood especially. I have grown up watching Bollywood movies, it's true, but then uh, back then in the 90s, It was not the level of indecency that we can see nowadays, which is just insane, you know, the level of... I am ashamed to look at these uh, movies, and especially not just in family, but even if I am alone, I'm watch watching these movies. I just find it so humiliating as a woman that actresses now have to show their body on a screen just to get importance, just to be called an actress, just to be given a role in a film. And you know, all the kinds of things which go on, the casting couch and all of that, which is a reality. There is no doubt about that. So, I know that as a woman, we often, we want to be perceived as beautiful. We want to be loved. We want to be accepted. We want men to, we want to be given importance by men. That's the reality. There is nothing really wrong about that, but in Islam, Let's not forget that you should not be concerned with strange male strangers. You should be concerned with your husband, one and only. If you don't have a husband, then of course you should be preserving your beauty instead of giving, instead of wasting your dignity over these people who are not really concerned with you, but who might just be interested in your body. That's the interesting part in Islam. It's that Islam prevents you from being exploited by the wrong kinds of people. We are all mature grown-up women, uh, grown-up people, adults here, so I understand that you also have that level of maturity to see. Islam is not trying to oppress you or telling you that you should... Um, it's not preventing you from having fun. It's not telling you that you, you should not look beautiful. In fact, Allah it really loves beauty. You know, Allah encourages you to take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself, of your body, of your beauty. If you want to beautify yourself, um, you do it, but you don't have to do it for the rest of the world. Because let's just say you do it. What do you think you're going to get from that? Sometimes I know how all the minds of girls functions. I know I am also a young woman. I have also been a teenager and you know with all these hormones 
sometimes loneliness uh, can push you to do certain things which you which you wouldn't do perhaps in normal circumstances sometimes your own unhappiness might tempt you into thinking that you know let me just go and flirt with these guys i mean some girls think that a guy is giving them importance he's texting them he's flirting with them whatever so why don't i just go out with him and why don't i remove my hijab and then you remove your hijab you start to you you it's like more and more you start to take it very lightly that's what happens in many cases it is a reality it is so subtle that you don't realize but it's shaitan uh, pushing you to remove your decency your modesty and in the end like all your principles as a muslim are just vanished into thin air and when you have given your yourself to that person you don't even receive anything in return it's that it's like you've been tempted to do that thing but afterwards, there is nothing at all to be gained. So that's the trap of shaitan. It's, it starts slowly. You remove your abaya, you, you remove your hijab, you remove I don't know how many clothes, and then you start to allow yourself to go into haram relationships with men who don't have any intention of ever taking you seriously, of marrying you. Many times, very young Muslim women fall into that trap of being in haram relationships with non-Muslim men as well. It's not even a relationship. You might say that it's not a sin because you're not actually, you're not physically intimate with that person. But even texting, flirting for no reason, when the conversation becomes inappropriate, it becomes flirting, then you know that you should get out of that equation. And I'm also going to share with you some of my tips how to do that effectively because I have become an expert in that. But my point is that don't be influenced by what the majority of people are doing. I always tell people, I know that the path is very lonely sometimes when you are a believer, when you try to do the right thing, when you try to abstain from sins, etc. Because most people are going to regard you as weird, as an alien. Let's not forget that or deny that truth. That's the bitter truth, you know. But it doesn't mean that if tomorrow everyone is eating shit, for example, forgive the metaphor, but if everyone is eating shit, then it doesn't mean that you also have to start to eat shit because you know that it's not right, it doesn't make sense. So always have that metaphor in your mind that when you see the majority of people doing something that you know deep down is not right, Allah does not approve of that. So please be convinced that you are not the weird one, you are not the lost one. These people are the ones who are lost, who are ignorant and who need help, not you. So be patient, like really, really don't abandon your Salat, your Quran, your modesty, your hijab. And please surround yourself by people who share that similar passion and who share that similar Iman. Inshallah, everything will be fine. Thanks for being here. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.